Hi, it's Paul DeCain again for dv247.com. In today's Logic 9 tutorial, we're going to be looking at flex time and more specifically how it can affect beats and tempo. Logic 9 certainly has some massive improvements to help beat makers, DJ producers, and everyone who has an interest in drum editing and tempo manipulation. Let's take a look first of all at drum note timing. To illustrate that, we're going to look at this audio file which contains a very badly played snare performance by yours truly. And we're going to use the flex time tool to just straighten that up a wee bit. We already have flex time view engaged on this particular screen, but just to get it on and off, it's a bit like the automation view. Uh, at the top here, you can see a hide show flex view, elastic audio editing. Click that on and off, and that opens up the track dialog to show you the different parameters of how flex time will slice up any beats, rhythm, or sounds that you have on an audio track. Just to go through the options that are available, first of all we have slicing, which is no time compression or expansion applied, which is great for drums and percussion. Moving down to rhythmic, uh, for rhythm guitars and keyboard parts, etc., that have a degree of rhythm to them. Uh, for monophonic, that's great for bass lines and other similar melodic performances. Polyphonic is pretty obvious. It's the most CPU intensive and it's based on the phase vocoding method which is good for chords, piano, choirs and full mixes. So for this particular audio file that contains a snare sound played pretty much badly against the normal timing grid, we're going to choose slicing. So let's just take a listen at the snare performance in relation to the rest of the groove. So let's use the flex tool to first of all anchor each individual snare where it is reason for that will be clear in a second. Just click with the flex tool on each individual snare. Now this has the effect of anchoring the actual snare uh, as a single hit. If these actual flex time anchors aren't in place uh, as indicated by these little orange marks here, uh, for example we'll take this one off by double clicking. Uh, if we move this particular snare to the left you'll see that the snare to the left of it will move in relation Eventually you move it so far towards the previous snare that the time compression hits into a red zone. Uh, you can see it goes from green to red there, so that, that's logic telling you that there is a problem. So this time we'll move the snare to the left hand side and because the snare before it is anchored, uh, it's only going to affect that particular sound, nothing before it. The green is indicating actually that time compression is taking place. Uh, orange indicates that time expansion is uh, occurring. And we'll just tidy up the other snares that are not quite right. That one's okay now. This one's slightly out. This is that one. And there we go. So those snares, checking this one here. Uh, yes, there we go. That's uh, fine and dandy. So let's listen to the audio file again. Moving on now to an audio file with a very basic conga pattern, which was played again very badly out of time. And uh, we're going to use the flex time tool to straighten that up as well as a complete performance, not just on an individual hit by hit basis. And with the flex time view already engaged, we pick the slicing method again. And just have a quick listen to this audio file so you can hear what the original sounds like. So let's just tidy up the whole performance by going to the quantize drop down menu and picking a 1 16th note timing grid. You can see what the result is there, so let's hear it. That's quite nice, it's straightening it up very nicely indeed. Just going to take a very brief look at making a groove template from an audio file uh, within Logic 9, previously in Logic Studio 8. Uh, the method of making a MIDI groove template from an existing audio file was of course possible, but it was a little fiddly when setting up the capture parameters. Here in Logic 9, the flex time capability has really improved. So to make a groove template from this audio file that we have on screen at the moment, which is 124 BPM funky loop. All we have to do is to go to the quantize menu and select this new option here called make groove template and let that go. Nothing's happened, but it actually has, because if you look at the quantize menu again, you can see now that we've got an option called PE loop, which is the name of the uh, track that we've just sourced that information from. 
And so we can apply this to any new MIDI information and give the rather funky feel of the MIDI information contained with the audio track we've just looked at and apply that to other drum parts, bass parts, etc. Not in essence part of the flex time architecture, but new in Logic Studio 9 is Speed Fade. Speed Fade allows you to emulate those DJ deck stop and start effects that are uh, associated with uh, the title of bullet editing from days gone by with people like Omar Santana, Sunny X and the Latin Rascals, etc. To achieve and illustrate this, uh, I'm just going to apply a few deck stop and kind of fade up deck start effects to some of the sections of this particular audio file go over to the quantized dialog on the left hand side you'll see that if we select one of the audio files that the fade in option now has changed or gives us an option for speed up and we can also select slow down for the fade out the deck stop effect will be basically an exaggerated fade out and the speed up effect will be a exaggerated fade in so let's just apply some of those to the left hand side and the right hand side of this particular set of audio files and see what we get. That sounds quite cool actually. You'll notice that the fade information is now colored yellow. This differentiates the speed up slow down effect of the fade dialog to the normal fade in and fade out. One of the coolest new features within Logic 9 is the very speed feature. Very speed allows the tempo of an entire track, uh, a full song which includes the MIDI parts, audio tracks, standard audio tracks and flex time alike to have their tempo changed up or down quite drastically with uh, literally no artifacts whatsoever. So in Logic 9 how do we actually use the very speed feature? Uh, it's quite easy really, go down to the transport bar, right click or control click on this and you will bring up the customized transport bar option. That gives a drop down window where you can click on very speed and hit OK. And now you can see that we have the very speed mode has appeared and the very speed deviation. Right click on the actual mode. Speed only is the first option. This affects tempo change up or down, but not pitch. Very speed, speed and pitch. This emulates a classic tape very speed where the musical pitch of the track shifts up or down. Very speed and MIDI, as above, but simultaneously transposes any non-drum MIDI tracks quantized to semitones. So we'll leave this as speed only for now. So this original track, as we said, is 104 BPM. Let's change that up to about 120 something. Leave it 124 and hit play again. I'm talking people about the same old game. They're running them numbers and the winners never change. Sounds quite cool. And let's change the speed only to very speed and pitch. So now the pitch of the track should change accordingly to the new tempo. I'm talking people about the same old game. Never change. And of course it works with uh, taking the tempo down as well. Originally we were at 104. Let's take it down to say 77 and try that. Well, that's a bit extreme, but you get the idea. And that's about it for the flex time, tempo and beat related features uh, for this part one video. Uh, in part two, we'll be looking at how flex time can work with vocals and looking at the expanded take folder as well. Until next time then, see you soon. Mm -hmm.